Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I'm going to take you on a tour of our girls room which has just recently had a makeover. This video here has been a long time coming. I have been slowly adding pieces from antique shops, been doing DIY projects, collecting from all over the place to bring this design together into life and it's taken me a really long time. We've been in our house for a little over a year and a half and from the very beginning everything from the old house was just sort of shoved in this room with no real clear direction or thought as to what we were doing with this room. In our last house we had a trundle bed because the room was so small that you couldn't fit two twin beds. In this house the rooms are massive. Don't have very many rooms but the rooms that we do have are big. And so I knew I wanted to utilize the space better and not just keep the trundle bed, but instead do two twin beds. The first piece that I found for this room was the twin bed that you see behind me. It was $20 at Goodwill. It needed a coat of white spray paint, but other than that, it was in very good condition. I love old beds, which I showed you in my boys room how I picked up two beds off Facebook Marketplace that are antique and they're just so much more solid than modern beds. These are metal beds, but they're not that flimsy metal. They, you can tell that they're never gonna go anywhere. I needed another bed for this room and I ended up not being able to find the exact same bed. And so I got my other daughter a different wire bed and just made them unified by painting them both the same white spray paint. So they do go together, but they are not the exact same. The next piece that I brought into this room was the rug. I found this wool rug on Facebook Marketplace for $300, which might sound like a lot, but it's a genuine wool rug that could go for a thousand if you find it online. And so I found it to be a really good bargain. I knew that I wanted a patterned rug in this space just to make it warm and collected and cozy and not something super neutral like jute. I wanted to make the rest of the room more calm and neutral with woods and whites and greens and brass and that kind of thing. But the rug I knew once I got everything in here would just be a nice piece that would disappear into the heart pine floors. We did keep a few pieces from their old room. One thing is a desk that my husband Luke's grandpa built for him many years ago. This desk had some gold hardware on it and I really love the desk, but I wanted to give it more of an antique flair. So I picked up some antique inspired bin poles from House of Antique Hardware and swapped those out so that now the desk has a very antique feel, even though it was made probably in the 2000s at some point. I also bought casters for it, but when Luke flipped it up to put the casters on, it clicked in my head that the desk has six legs and not four. So we won't be doing that, but it's okay because we don't really want it to move around anyway. We also have a dresser in here that I picked up from a garage sale that I chalk painted white. I would like to repaint it at some point a color, but for now we're just leaving it like that. I also brought in on top of that a wicker trunk that I found at an antique shop. I don't remember at this point what I paid for it, but I'm thinking around 20 bucks. And that's a really good place for the girls to keep all of their many, many doll clothes and accessories. Now to the right of that, I brought in the armoire from downstairs in the living room. We are planning a big living room makeover and we're gonna be doing a mantle in there. And so I needed more storage in the girls' room. For the last year and a half, they've put all of their clothes for two girls in that white dresser. And now we have a nice place to hang dresses and put bags and it's just a nice catch-all. It serves as the closet in this room since it doesn't have one. Now for the bedding, I picked up some white quilts for all four kids' beds actually, in the boys' room and in here. I just got basic white quilts and then I knew I could add to those to make them more cozy. So for the girls' room, I wanted a fluffy, soft duvet at the end of each bed and I got the idea in my head before even seeing these that I wanted something sage green. Because of the sage green in the rug, I just thought it would complement so well. I ended up finding that they had the very thing at Target. They have a new line there. I forget the name of it at this point, but I will leave links to everything that has links down in the description box below. Of course, a lot of things don't because they are handmade or thrifted, but they did not have them in twin size. So what I did was I bought a King Duvet in the sage color that I liked and I cut it in half and finished off that one cut edge and then used the other three that were already finished 
to just put a duvet cover in. And then I also bought a king size duvet insert by the same brand and cut it in half. I could have bought two twin duvets, but I was afraid that since these dimensions aren't exactly the standard twin because I cut a king in half, I wanted to just mirror that exact same thing with the duvet insert so that it would be the same size. And they work perfectly. I fold them in fourths and put them at the foot of the bed so that it's high. I wanted it to be like it's stacked up on the end and just look really cozy. And then bonus, the linen duvet also came with two sage linen pillowcases. Now, they are definitely a little bit big because it's the king size but I just let them drape off the side and it looks pretty. At some point I could alter them to fit their pillowcases, but I definitely don't have to. I also picked up on Etsy two white pillowcases with crocheted edges. I do come across them occasionally at thrift shops, but I really wanted to get this room reveal done and I wanted some of those vintage touches and those crocheted edges are just perfect. So it was worth it to me to pick them up just easily on Etsy. I just searched white crochet, vintage pillowcases. This listing came up and then it was done. I also made the girls each a monogram pillow. I have an embroidery machine. So I just used bleach drop cloth and then embroidered their monograms. And then those go in front of the stacked up pillows. The bedding is simple, but it's also really cozy. At the foot of the bed, I brought in two wicker trunks with lids. My girls are not minimalists. I've said this before, but they have dolls and all kinds of toys and they love them. Their dolls are like children to them so they can't just get rid of them. And one of my kids really loves unicorns. Now don't be deceived by this room tour. Most of the time there are unicorns and dolls everywhere. I did put them in the trunks for this tour just so that the colors are pretty and we can remember what this room's supposed to look like. Every once in a while I visit my Instagram and my YouTube and my blog and remember how I put things together so that I can just have a moment of enjoying the house and how it's supposed to look. But let's be real, most of the time these toys are scattered. So I know I'm gonna get a few commenters who are like, where are all the kids things? Trust me, they're here and they'll be out most of the time. But I wanted to keep the base of the room calm. And these wicker trunks are really perfect if you do have a moment like you're having company or for some reason you want the rooms really clean, you can just stash all of the toys in those. So I will also leave links for those down in the description box below. They're perfect because they have lids and they sit at the foot of the bed and look adorable. Also at the foot of the bed, Luke's grandpa, the same one that built the desk and the chair that Ruthie uses for drawing, also built doll beds, wooden doll beds, and they're just adorable. I've thought about painting them, staining them, and eventually I will. I also would like to get some really cute quilts for them and I think it would add a nice pop of color. So far I haven't been able to, just I haven't done it yet but I will eventually. But I think that they look really cute at the foot of the bed. Now for the nightstands, just a few days ago actually before this reveal, a friend of mine, Ashley from Little Glass Jar Blog, she had a neighbor give her this old secretary and it needed some paint, but she said, do you want it? You can have it, I don't really need it in my house. And I'm like, yes, it looks very Victorian with the mirror above it and all of the details. And it turns into a desk when you pull the front open, there's chains and it's a desk. So this is my daughter Johanna's desk that she can draw and read. And also there's lots of storage in there. So whatever she's currently working on creatively can be stashed in there and it can look clean in here. I found the little chair at an antique shop near me and then also at that same shop they had this hat and I loved that the blue bow in the hat matched the blue in the pillow that I put on the bench in between their beds. So you might recognize the drop cloth slip cover ruffle bench that's in the middle of their beds. I did make that slip cover on a YouTube video at one point or a blog post, I don't remember which one. So I'll leave a link down in the description box for that. We are redoing our living room. It no longer goes with the style. I'm doing the downstairs more of the, not formal, but more formal. And the upstairs, like our room where I showed a tour in the summer, and this room, more of that country flowy feel that I love so much. The rooms up here, are just less formal. They don't have crown molding. The ceilings aren't as tall. They're pretty tall, but not super tall. And so it feels just more right up here. So I brought that up here and I put it in between the windows so they can sit there and have a little cozy reading area. I even showed them how they could pull the curtains around and it could be a cozy little reading nook. 
I added two of my handmade pillows, the one I made from a sweater and then the ruffle linen one I also made on this channel. And then the curtains, again, because we're redoing the living room, the curtains were made for the living room. I made the tie top curtains here on this channel out of linen. They never felt quite right in that room. For some reason, it just, it needs more structure, whereas the flowy aspect of the curtains are more suited for up here. So I just hemmed them a little bit shorter because the ceilings are taller downstairs and then put them in their windows. And I think that they are really cute and inviting. On Ruthie's side for her desk, I found her little nightstand, the wooden one at an antique shop. I either gave 30 or 60 for it, I don't remember. I just knew it was perfect for this room because it had a little drawer and it would just be perfect. And so I, I don't remember what I paid for it exactly. The spice rack on top of that, I bought for our kitchen makeover, but then once I started getting things on the wall, it just felt like we had too much. And so I put that on hers as a place to organize her sewing things, like her tape measure and her pins and any little sewing notions like elastic zippers. She loves playing with all that kind of stuff and she makes some really cool things. And so I thought that'd be good for her there. Now above their beds, I was searching high and low for artwork and I never found anything that I felt like really suited my girls. I, I found things that I thought was pretty, but I was like, eh, it's a girl's room. And then it clicked to me literally just last Saturday. So less than a week ago, I was like, you know what? I should just take pictures of my girls together because they're regular kids and they're not always best friends, but I want them to remember even when there's little scuffles between them that they are best friends and forever will be they're, They do get along just fine, but there's times when they're scuffling like usual. And so I'm like, let's get pictures of them together and smiling and put that in their room as a reminder. So I went out last Saturday on the farm, took a picture of the girls, one with the goat and Bessie the cow, and then the other with kittens. And I think that they're perfect for this room. I told the girls to wear denim overalls and then they have these neutral shirts. So it actually really matches the flow of the room, which is perfect. And then the frames I just found at Michael's, but I spray painted them with the same spray paint that I spray painted the light fixture and then the frames above Ruthie's desk, which I'll get to here shortly. So I really wanted to carry that same color throughout and just a couple of cans of spray paint helped me to take some frames that really weren't all that special, just cheap ones for Michaels and turn them into beautiful artwork. I bought 11 by 14s and then matted them to make them look more professional. And I even bought them from a professional printing website called Impix. And then I paid the extra to have them be matte finish versus the shiny slick finish so that they would look just more professional and more like art. Okay, for the light fixture, a friend of mine online, um, she was redoing her office. Her name is Lauren from the blog Bless Her House. And they were doing a modern office and she had this frilly chandelier that just did not fit with that vibe at all. And she was taking it down and someone messaged her and said, hey, you should reach out to Farmhouse on Boone. I bet she would like that. And so I paid her for shipping. She shipped this big old thing from the East Coast to me and for way less than I could buy a new light fixture for, I spray painted this one and added it to this room. Honestly, I wasn't sure I was going to love it, but after spray painting it, after hanging it up in this room, it just brings a focal point. Like when you walk in, something needs to draw your eye up because the ceilings are so tall in here. They're not like in my last house, they were like seven foot. These are, I believe nine feet. And so even with how low and big the chandelier hangs, it's still much taller than the average person. And so it's perfect in here. And the girls, when they walked in, were just like, oh, this. They had a little cheap ceiling fan in here before and it didn't work anymore. The blades didn't turn. They were small. So we weren't missing much there. And I really love how it turned out. Now above Ruthie's desk, I started collecting antique frames a few months ago because I thought it would be really cool for her to display her artwork there. She loves to draw. And this is normally a desk that she uses for all things creative. She swaps out her sewing machine there her piano or her keyboard and then drawing supplies. So I thought it'd be fun to display some of her creative work. I spray painted the two large ones with the same paint as the frames above the beds and the chandelier. And then the other ones were just, I bought them that way. They were already gold. 
And so we made a little arrangement, put in her drawings. Now the cat watercolor, that came from a follower on Instagram. There's a picture on my Instagram of Ruthie holding one of her kitties in the garden by the picket fence with the hydrangeas and someone painted that and then sent it to me. And since it's Ruthie and she loves her kitties, I thought it'd be perfect for in this room. And so I put that in the arrangement with some of her drawings. And I told her, you can swap these out anytime. So if you're currently working on something and it's really pretty and inspiring, these frames are meant to be swapped out so that you can display your artwork. Okay, one last detail for this room is the hand mirror wall behind me. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. I actually started the mirror collection at least a year ago now. Finally felt like I had enough and we can always add more to them. Ruthie said they look like they're going up way too much and so I'm like, well maybe if we add one more at the top, one at the bottom, I don't know, that's fine. So this is meant to be ongoing. I just used the command strips that were up to, I believe five pounds, like the biggest ones. Not that they're heavy, but just for security purposes. I tied some black ribbon bows around them and then just hung them in an arrangement. And I think they look so cute. They're all vintage and gold. And it really is the vibe I'm going for in this room. It's like girly, a little fancy, but with a casual vibe, not super young, but you know it's a girl's room. That's what I'm going for. Vintage, of course, Victorian. And so this is what I've come up with. I'm really proud of it. I also have one more project I'm hoping to do in here. I found a frame roadside, so it was completely free. I had Luke rip out the middle part that it just was looking a little dingy and I didn't really wanna paint the frame. And so I have it propped up against the wall right now and eventually I want to paint chalkboard behind it because the girl said they would love to have a chalkboard in here to draw things. And so it's just gonna look like a giant framed chalkboard. A friend of mine, actually a local friend of mine who's a potter, she gave me this idea and I loved it because I already have the perfect frame for it and I don't really know what else I'm gonna put in the frame considering it's so large. And so it's gonna be perfect. I haven't done it yet, unfortunately, before this reveal, but I wanted to get this up anyway and you can picture it there. It's gonna look so good. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed this farmhouse girls room reveal with a more collected and layered look. Not that simple, minimal, modern farmhouse like I did in my last house. I'm really just loving experimenting with this style and it feels cozy and warm. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.